welcome back on this Tuesday as we continue our analysis and review of the Prime Minister's Honorable Philip J. Pierre's address to the nation, which focused primarily on the issue of uh, national security and crime here on the island. That address delivered last um, Sunday um, evening. I always like to be fair and balanced here. So two things to me which stood out from the Prime Minister's address to the nation was a proposal to convert the George Charles Secondary School in um, Cully Sac to the uh, a new facility for the rehabilitation of, uh, of uh, young offenders and um, juveniles within our society. That stood out um, to me, but a uh, bit concerning given the fact that we have a boys training center and um, the Uptown Girls Garden, and we know all too well and are familiar with the stories there. So whereas it, it, it sounds good that um, we're going to be converting this um, secondary school, George Charles, into a new facility. A um, bit worrisome for, for some who know the history of how we've treated and maintained facilities of this nature, um, that we will be adopting a new facility um, with many problems that are old. But let, let's wait and see how that, that, that unfolds. Um, another proposal from the Prime Minister was the establishment of an inter a ministerial um, group in an interministerial panel, so to speak, to have regular discourse and to strategize on um, issues of crime and um, national security. It sounds good to hear, hear from you, that Prime Minister, but that's, to me, it's, it's long overdue and should have been in place by now for us as a progressive um, nation, and sounds to me a lot like a, a, a former um, command center makeup, but it's all well and good. We should have uh, an established system and protocol where um, government agencies, ministries, and departments um, with similar mandates converse and, and have discourse regularly to strategize and plan such suggestions on uh, how we can deal with not just crime, but other issues of um, national importance. Alex is on. Um, I'm getting a pop-up on the video. I'm not seeing if, if you guys are seeing it on your end. But let me say good morning to Alex. Alex, thanks for being so patient this morning. Good morning, good morning. Thank you nice, for having me. Nice to have you on. Alex Lava, friend of the show, social media um, commentator as well, concerned citizen. Um, you watched the Prime Minister's address, correct? Um, I won't say I watched it. Um, the moment I, re I realized um, it was pre-recorded, then that hit a core in me on, on two levels. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not going to say I'm, I... I didn't watch it. I paused it. I put it on mute. Um, but I am informed of what was um, his address. So I, I'm aware of tidbits of it, but I can comment on what bothered me about the fact that it's um, pre-recorded. First of all, tell me, why, why did you think it should have been live? And, and what's your disappointment with it being pre-recorded? So, I mean, as a social commentator, um, however you name it, um, I have integrity and I have a lot of respect for what I do. So what I saw done by the prime minister is no different than what's happening on the streets. That was an assault on democracy because that was a disrespectful way to have a conversation for a very important um, period of time that we're going through. Um, and I'm getting a little emotional here in that there are tremendous challenges that are being faced globally. It's no different than in St. Lucia. We are, without a doubt, facing an elevated amount of crime, loss of lives. And at this point, towards the end of the year, the prime minister chose to, pro to provide a pre-recorded message. That felt like taking a, a ham and putting it in the microwave for Christmas. Mm. It didn't feel good, it didn't taste good, and it didn't sound good. And for somebody like me who has and continues to pay attention to the democratic institutions that we have, the democratic processes um, that we value, that provide stability, that provide hope, that provide safety for people, this was a marketing strategy and to me disrespectful on so many facets I'll, to the people of St. Lucia. I'll come with, I'll come with some, some balance there in just a bit, but Alex, what else in a live broadcast would you have liked to see? Would, would you have liked to see interaction with the public? What else would you have liked to see as opposed to just the Prime Minister making his presentation live? 
I think what I have an issue with, and we're seeing this across the Caribbean, and this is the type of PR and marketing sort of input that communications persons, this is where you see people who are journalists who are now working within the bureaucratic process are trying to package the message. They're trying to control the narrative. It's these sort of PR terms. And what's happening is that we're seeing the political um, conversation or the, politi the, the career of a politician is now to be hidden behind a wall. And we're not seeing the live politician to communicate with the people. We're not seeing the politicians go into the communities where the crime is taking place mm. right now. So for me, and I take it from that angle, in that what we are noticing is that they're guarding themselves away from being confront mm. to confront people. They could have had a live in the, they could have he could have had a live um, national address followed by something to do with the media to ask some follow up questions to have. Yeah some news and sub, sub, some substantive conversations going through the week. What we've had now is a prepackaged um, bulletin dropped. He's on his way to Taiwan, and then they're just going to, to manage it in a different way. There's no interaction and conversation of what is innovative and what is going to solve crime or what's happening in the nation. In interesting. Not very, very, very interesting perspective from you, you Adex, the, the interaction that that possible live would have... Um, would have made. Let me balance it off, and it's very important for me to balance off here, um, although I'm no longer paid by them, but uh, very important for me to balance and preserve the integrity of this platform. We must be fair. No mm -hmm. other prime minister in recent memory, and, and I'll say it with, with all honesty, no other prime minister in recent memory has addressed the nation live outside of of the parliament so and if you were surprised saying we shall be surprised all national addresses where the national anthem comes on first have been pre-recorded former prime minister kenny anthony did it former prime minister alan shastney did it stevenson king did it vaughn lewis did it sir john compton did it. all of them um did it is it right to Alex's opinion, it's not, especially now when you, you're dealing with the issue of, of um, national security and heightened crime. So I get oh, your... Hold on. Go let, ahead. Let me, ask something. Let, let me ask you something. And I, I don't know how much time we have, so, sure. so, so, so tell me where you need me to go. You mean to tell me during the COVID period when Alan Shastney was making um, live broadcast, during COVID, National addresses around COVID. With, these, these, these were live. These were live. Okay. These were regular so, live sessions in the COVID command center, correct? So, so I want to be fair to, and I, I, I take your point around what you just said, but let's be clear and let's be respectful to the people of St. Lucia. Yeah. We've lost 66 to 67 lives, yeah. young men and young women, and you come in and give me a pre recorded. I'm, um, agreeing, I'm um, agreeing with you, Alex. I'm, Absolutely. I'm agreeing with you. It, it would have been better PR. If we look in the package PR, you would get the family of um, two of the recent homicide victims in a room with you to sympathize and shed tears with them and to comfort them. Stay with me, I Alex. Stay with me, Alex. Stay with me, Alex. We have to resume in just a bit. Just hold on. Oh, thank you. Get your clothes sparkling clean with brighter whites and brighter colors. Use Joby Antibacterial Washing Powder. Ultra concentrated formula gives more washes with brightening factors added to keep your clothes looking new. And with the added organic fabric softener, your clothes will be soft and fluffy. Joby Antibacterial Washing Powder is also effective in stain removal. For cleaner, brighter, softer clothes with the sweet scent of early spring morning, use Joby Antibacterial Washing Powder. Washing powder. My family, my love, my Joby. Available at supermarkets island wide. For orders, call 455 3076. Morning a loss? Heart 7 TV wants to help you celebrate the beautiful memory of your loved one with In Loving Memory. Celebrating lives, whether it's a birthday, a wedding anniversary or some memorable occasion or the anniversary of the passing of the deli departed 
Part 7 TV will create a moving video tribute of that special person, showing how much he or she meant to you, treasured memories, unforgettable moments. Share them with the world and repeat the airing as often as you'd like. Help keep your loved one's memory alive forever in the minds and hearts of all who care. In loving memory, celebrating lives. Contact us at telephone number 452-6040 or email us at inlovingmemory at caribbeanhottv.com. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us and um, thank you to my technicians for getting us back on um, the air. We're back on with Alex Lab. Um, Alex, before we, we had that short break, we were talking about packaging of um, PR. And I was saying that I'm agreeing with you that there would have been some benefit and many solutions um, were anticipating a live feed. In my experience, I would have hooked the Prime Minister up with two or three of the victims' family, um, get them in there, um, shed the tears if you want to market PR or take the Prime Minister to Marshall Boulevard um, in the heart of where it is and have him to deliver his address um, from there if you want to pack. But information that we have, Alex, the Prime Minister didn't have time. He has already scheduled to, to go over to Taiwan on Saturday and um, the address had to be recorded as per the schedule. There you have it. So doesn't have time to, or, or the foresight. Um, to put these things in place before he goes to Taiwan. He knew this was happening. We were over 60 murders already. You mean to tell me he waited till we got to 50, 65, 66 to make this last minute? So for me, I, I'm, I'm bothered from that approach. That being said, I am informed. And what I wanted to do was pause it. And because it's pre-recorded, hear what people were saying and let them feed me the information of what was relevant mm. um, or not relevant from what he said. So like I figured, it was an uninnovative uninspiring, sort of nothing new, um, pre-recorded message. So I didn't miss anything. Yeah, hold on for me. We have a caller. Good morning. Welcome to the platform. Good morning. Welcome. Is the caller still with us? Good Hi, morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. I'm just listening to the gentleman, Alex. I'm wondering really what is the issue? Is his concern that the prime minister did not come on live is it the content is it simply because his speech or address to the nation was pre-recorded because i'm thinking never in my memory has any prime minister addressed the nation whether it was live and there was any engagement with the public so it, it's, I didn't different. Fully. it's different if he's asking for a press conference 
as to an address to the nation. Yeah. Fair enough. So, Carla, when um, the Prime Ministers of past have addressed the nation with the national anthem, um, full address, it have all been pre-recorded, but um, be guided. And Alex reminded us that during the period of COVID, on many occasions, um, former Prime Minister Alan Chastney addressed the nation live um, at the command center, not interacting with the public, but they were, met, they were experts and um, media present within the setting to interact and, and to share feedback there. But Alex's, Alex's main concern, and I hope I represent him well, he thinks it was insensitive somewhat for the Prime Minister to package the message and try to um, package his PR what, along what a really sensitive issue like this. Grasping at straws there? What really do you mean by packaging a message? Let us look at content. Let us see if really the ideas or what the content in the address. Is there something sure. for us to benefit from so, and learn from? Is there direction? Call we, we did that. Call up. Caller, we did that. Hold on, hold on, hold on for me. Hold on for me, caller. Hold on for me, caller. We did that. Um, we did assess the content. So let me ask you, from your assessment of the content of the Prime Minister's address, his point for intergovernmental um, panel or, or, or grouping, um, more resources for the police, based on the content, were you comforted? Are, are you confident that something is being done to confront the issues? We've loved the caller, have we? I mean... Um, Go ahead, Alex. Th this is where we're at. And I mean, people may want to, to, to come at me and say, okay, what exactly bothered me? It actually feeds into what I'm saying. The speech and the content and what he gave was uninnovative and, and nothing new. And if what he's doing there is, has been done before, it means it's not working. So this type of messaging, which I'm saying, if we normally have pre-recorded, it doesn't work. We need to think outside the box mm -hmm. and start to reimagine the cities, the, 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 the lives we're managing, and the institutions we place people in leadership positions with. Mm -hmm. If we keep saying that, they've always done this and it's never been yeah. done. That is the point. We need to reimagine our engagements of the political process, and it's not working. And what he said in that speech was uninnovative, an interministerial um, committee. Those things never existed before. I mean, now they're going to do it. I mean, the, the bare bones of what he's providing doesn't make sense. And the one that bothers me, and I just want to touch on it, and I, I, I'll go back and listen to it now, is that you mean to tell me SLP, this government, is going to be the type of government that is going to usher in surveillance, cameras and drones on the people of St. Lucia? I mean, this is madness. Madness. It doesn't work in anywhere across the world around, other than China around surveillance to be able to control crime and this sort of thing. And that's what we're introducing into St. Lucia as some innovative way to control crime. No, get, put your shoes on, take your jacket off and go into the streets and talk to the people that are being um, that are suffering or facing economic hardship that have to result to do crime. It's an economic issue. Mm -hmm. It's not a surveillance issue. Thanks, Alex. One more call at this moment. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Shannon and Alex. How are you? Not too bad, caller. Good. Um, <clears throat> I agree with Alex um, totally with what he's saying. I also have to add that you know, after watching this on, was it Sunday? Sunday evening or Saturday evening. Um, I can't even remember. It was so irrelevant. Um, I think that the prime minister did a very poor job in reaching St. Lucians and in speaking about crime and also in not sending a message out to the criminals at least let them know that something will be done that you need to stop there was no he was not assertive he he they showed some visuals of war in russia you know playing on the people's minds and i'm going to say it as is 
playing on the people's minds. So the price of fuel is still sky high. It has gone down other places in the Caribbean, but St. Lucia, we still sky high. And you're all going to play on the people's minds and show us Russian fuel and show us... Um, uh, uh, climate change images of climate change, but you will not show one image of the people who lost their lives. Not one photo, not saying you sorry, not reaching out to the families, not doing anything of that sort. So they're playing on the people's minds. The prime minister needs to stop. You need to stop. You need to stop and take stock of what you're doing. If you're going to show images, you might as well go all the way and show images. Let people see what is really happening. But you can't play on their minds to suit your agenda. But the crime factor that we're dealing with, you're not going to use an image to let people see how bad it is. And you're not going to reach out to those criminals and say, Lisa, listen, guys, this is it. We've had enough. We had four killings in three days, and it needs to stop. We will find you. Mm -hmm. We will find you. You need to take stock of what you're doing. Get rid of the ammunition, or we're coming for you. you need a, he needed to be more assertive. Everything is a plaster on a saw, and, the saw, and they just keep digging back into that same saw, and that soil is not healing. And like Alex was just saying, ma madness is doing the same things over and over and expecting different results. results. Mm -hmm. You need to be more innovative. You need to reach out to the people. St. Lucia is at its lowest. And not just in crime, in everything else. Well, now I in can hear. everything so else. We need, we need to bring our standards up. We need to work. We need to get up and work rather than sit in Parliament and just power JT at each other. Absolutely. We need them to work. And having said this, um, I need to say <laughs> good morning and goodbye to everyone. Good morning. Thanks for calling. Um, Alex, do you agree that, that the Prime Minister needed to be more assertive and speak to the, the, the people causing the mayhem, say directly, we know you are, we are strategizing to come for you without divulging um, where the roadblocks would take place or that roadblocks would take place. Did he need a stronger message? I mean, it, it, look, as a leader, yes, of course you can always be stronger, but the question becomes when you're dealing with issues with citizens, fellow citizens, let's be honest, whether they engage in criminal activity or not, we need to show compassion. So mm. while I can appreciate that he needs to be a stronger and more assertive um, politician or leader, he needs to also show compassion. Where was the compassion for those families? Yeah. These are lost lives. There is a reason, compassionately, why somebody engages in criminal activity. Mm -hmm. And my issue right now is that the assertiveness is not going to solve it. It never has. Mm -hmm. The question needs to be, when are we going to show compassion and get into those communities and have conversations, include them in dialogue? The thing is, and I'm just going to throw it out there, if it becomes, and it has, more economically viable, more family viable for children and boys and girls in the community to seek solace and safety and peace and community within criminal activity, mm. that is where the problem is. The problem isn't that we don't have enough police or we don't have enough um, surveillance and cameras. The, 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 what is happening in society is that it's now more economically viable to live a life that is related to certain things. Mm. Selling weed, we need to have these kinds of conversations. If it's more economically viable, people will walk in that direction. Mm -hmm. It's not because somebody wants to be bad and take, buy a gun to kill another. No, it's an economic issue. I think we need to show compassion. I think we need to be able to, on the other hand, to recognize that whilst our spiritual practice, however it may lay, can provide peace, safety, and healing, it doesn't provide solutions. Mm. If it was, if prayers were to solve 
anything, it would have slave, saved, saved us from slavery years ago. It would have not had a, a, a earthquake in Haiti to take almost 200,000 lives. Prayers provide healing. It provides a safe place, but it doesn't provide solutions. And I think a lot of what we're doing, as the caller said, um, that I want to touch on is that we are living in the era of mediocrity. We are accepting mediocrity as the standard, and this is the so this is where we're ending up. We're not having our leaders do the job that we expect them to do. And I want to see the politicians, rather than come out and be stern with us citizens on the air, go into the communities yeah, and have conversations with people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you listen to a lot of um, citizens as well post the prime minister's address, um, one gets the sense that the Prime Minister may have missed an opportunity to sympathize with the families Absolutely. of um, the victim, the family of the nurse um, who was gunned down on, on, on way home from a 12-hour long shift, the family of the young man in La Cleary, the family of the Rastafarian who was gunned down in Marsha. Um, one gets the sense that the Prime Minister Pierre also missed an opportunity to, to sympathize and in some way comfort, comfort them through word, if at least. Um, during his address to the nation. It was insensitive and disrespectful, and it was a lost opportunity. I'll go on record again, and I'll say it, SLP, this government haven't gotten into office. I believe their political communication strategy is good. I think the bureaucratic process of having the communication team, whoever is leading it and whoever works there, suck. And need to, they need to rethink that game because they are not engaging and leading and they're not governing with their communication team. Sadly, it doesn't connect with the people. They, they, they're still in opposition and political campaign election mode, unfortunately. And about, that's sad to see. I was, I was about to tell you the, um, the good senator would tell you they won with that um, PR strategy. So, so um, fact. Well, that's right. Lisa, Lisa can say that because Lisa is part of the communications on the political side and excellent. You can keep doing that. But when you start to govern and you start to lead and you need to you need to recognize that you are not governing only the people who voted for you. You're also communicating and leading the people who didn't. And you need to be able to come down the middle. And what we have now in this communication team and this iteration of SLP is a very sad um, legacy that's going to be left. I do want to mention just quickly before I go, I didn't, this, this is not, this is not, I don't have any political side. I want to be on record to say this. I think there's a lot of conversation that people say that it, politics shouldn't um crime should not be political they're wrong crime is a political issue so is education so is health what we shouldn't make it is partisan you shouldn't make it one is better than the other mm -hmm. we should all be working together to get to a solution but crime is a political issue so is health so is education the roads all of those things because they have the resources to address it and they need to get to work, and I'm not seeing that. He's on a plane with whoever else, and now we don't have a strategy. We have nothing. Yeah. People are lost. People are upset. Yeah. Lastly, Alex, what is people in your circle saying post, post the address um, within the diaspora where you are now? What, what are your friends and people within the circle saying? Ha. Um, I, I live in Montreal, Quebec. Um, the my, my circle does not pay attention to what's happening in <laughs> thank you <laughs> thanks for that. you stay safe out there my my good man and we'll keep in contact with you. you i think your 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 track record shows that you've maintained a, a middle line and where where you need to slap one side you you very much you, you do so you you slap the other side likewise as well alex has um, no political affiliation and his his track record shows if you don't want to listen to people like Alex, you you're very much in the wrong place thanks my good man for coming on this morning all the best brother take care thank you for having me Alex Lava, my very special guest this hour some feedback from um the whatsapp platform again don will do all it, all within his power to um ensure that we can beam the, the the whatsapp contributions on screen so you can see exactly um as they come in Good morning. Uh, I was agreeing with Alex, Alex on the form for the presentation. However, to compare the command center addresses of Shastney 
um, which by the way was done by this prime minister as well tells me he is not as objective as he claims his answers to crime is to walk in the streets and talk to the criminals um, who are they yes obviously we have to if you don't want to you have to engage them you know caller um, I am a supporter of engagement of um, the criminals on the ground you need to you need to get down to the roots we engage them we engage them every four or five years you know so it makes sense now to engage them um, say to them that uh, their, their actions are not supported um, try to find out from them what is contributing to their actions and how you can um, develop policy and programs to um, support them to to get them away from some of the actions. so I, I want to agree that um, there is some benefit in going going the way of of on the ground another contribution uh, good morning shannon addex is spot on his name is addex by the way addex lava um, i think this continues we may be in an uprising soon sooner than we um, think let's take a quick commercial break 12 and a half minutes now before nine o'clock we conclude on top